Ever since Aditha Karigalan came to the Kadampur mansion, the permanent residents and visitors had to pass the time like those who stand on thorns and walk on fire. No one could have guessed what kind of astra would depart from the prince's tongue at any moment. So everyone was suffering. Karikalan used to make others squirm by often jokingly mentioning the conspiracy to install Madhurandha on the Chola throne. Palyavatarayar could not bear this. He urged Sambhavarayar that it was necessary to openly convey the opinion of the Kairatrasas to Karikalan. Sambhavarayaro kept putting it off saying, Wait a minute, he has come as our guest anyway, he is just rude. What does he do if he can think of one thing as another? We will see and tell when the time is right. Without putting them in the dilemma of how to start the talk, Aditha Karikalan himself asked about it one day when everyone was gathered. You who know all the truth tell yourselves. Is it fair for my father to ask me after all this time to give up the kingdom to Madhurandan? Is it a crime for me to deny it? Aditha Karigalan asked flatly, and everyone was stunned. Palyavetarayar cleared his throat, thinking that he might take some time to reply, Come again. You have asked your Thirukovalar Patan for his opinion on this matter? What does Malayaman say? Said. Ah! Do you all know the nature of that old man? Would he consent to give up his grandson's throne to another? He would rather cut me off, along with my birth mother. Now Malay Amon has begun to add Sanyam to establish his grandson's right to sing Gadana. But I will only listen to him and walk away. No way. I'll do as you all say. Kari Kalan said like a sad child. Even if it were divided into two, each would be a large kingdom. It is our final opinion that it would therefore be fair to divide the kingdom south of the river Kaladam between Madhurandak Deva and the northern part as their own. If you agree to this then you can do the above. I will take it upon myself to make the emperor agree to this arrangement, he said. Aditha Karikalan then laughed cheerfully which made Palyavatarayar's stomach ache. Bada! Splitting the Chola kingdom into two, with the Palyavatarayas in the southern kingdom and the Sambuvaras in the northern kingdom, is a fair distribution. It is a fitting reward for the service your two families have rendered to my patent since the days of my father. But I have no interest in dividing the kingdom. Dividing the kingdom by means is one thing, dividing the wife who wears a thali. One thing. You old men might agree. I don't. When Kari Kalan said that, a spark flew in the eyes of the great Pavatarayar. He stood up angrily. He also prepared to unsheath the sword. My father had to be crowned by the arrangement of Emperor Parantaka. Let the fault go with him. Although I have full rights over this kingdom according to the principle of son after father, I give it up. But there is a condition. I want an army of 300,000 warriors to carry the force against the north. A year's worth of supplies, equipment and food for the army must be collected. There are also 300 big trees that can go in the ocean. Having sent Parthibendra as the captain of the fleet to the coast, I will take the force over the northern country by land. Parthipendra and I will meet at the mouth of the Ganges and then go further north. Ancestor of my clan, rich in charcoal of my name, poets have sung that he planted the tiger flag on the Himalayas. What my forefathers have achieved, I will now achieve again. With the pain of my sword and the pain of the shoulders of the warriors who accompany me, I will conquer the countries north of the river Krishna. And, if I die in battle, I will reach the heroic heaven with the joy of having established the heroic glory of the Chola clan. Pavur Pata Uncle Kadampur What are you saying? Will you agree to fulfill this condition? I will reach the heroic heaven with the joy of having established the heroic fame of the Chola clan. Pavur Pata. Uncle Kadampur. What are you saying? Will you agree to fulfill this condition? I will reach the heroic heaven with the joy of having established the heroic fame of the Chola clan. Pavur Pata. Uncle Kadampur. What are you saying? Will you agree to fulfill this condition? After hearing this majestically, Kari Kalan stopped. Both the old men were stunned. Palyavatarayar, confused, said, Prince. 
who are we to agree to their terms? What right do we have? To ask the emperor instead. Said. Will any father willingly command to be brought captive? Today all the people of Chola country are boiling with rage against you for taking Aromazai captive and drowning him in the sea. Prince! Who uttered such an outrageous slander? I will cut out the tongue of the one who uttered it and dismember him too! Screamed the reaper. No matter how great a warrior you are, you cannot even summon a whirlwind in the middle of the ocean and knock over the sails of a ship. Perhaps it was the work of the Pandian sorcerers, you are not responsible for it. Therefore you are not responsible for the curse of Aromazai. But don't tell me any more just must ask the emperor. Then you will also say that in that love you should ask Brahmarayan. Emperor and Prime Minister bear some of those titles. They cannot do anything against your wishes. Tell me if you want me to ask Patti Nandini Devi of Pavur. Therefore you are not responsible for the curse of Aromazai. But don't tell me any more just must ask the emperor. Then you will also say that in that love you should ask Brahmarayan. Emperor and Prime Minister bear some of those titles. They cannot do anything against your wishes. Tell me if you want me to ask Patti Nandini Devi of Pavur. Therefore you are not responsible for the curse of Aromazai. But don't tell me any more just must ask the Emperor. Then you will also say that in that love you should ask Brahmarayan. Emperor and Prime Minister bear some of those titles. They cannot do anything against your wishes. Tell me if you want me to ask Patti Nandini Devi of Pavur. At this time Kanamaran interrupted, Sir. Those who have come to our house as a guest. He began to speak with some confusion. Kari Kalan looked at him with fire in his eyes and smiled like a triple burnt Shiva, Kandamaran. Is this your house? I forgot. I forgot that you are a warrior born in the family of Valval Ori in Koli Hill. In your house, even where you are, I should speak with a little fear. What have I said wrong? Your what have I done to the house guests? Kanamaran. Why are your hands and feet shaking? Have you also caught the middle fever that is spreading in Elam? You have not even gone to Elam. He said. Vandiyathevan then said, Come again. Kanamaran has no fever. He is angry that they called the younger queen of Palvur a grandmother. He said. Gondhamaran looked at Vandiyadeva with hostility and started to take out the knife. Parthipendra grabbed his hand and pulled him to sit and said something in his ear and Kanthamaran fell asleep. Only his body was shaking for a while. There is no difficulty in collecting three hundred ships. You must agree. Madhuran that god must also agree. That's it. What are you saying? Karigalan stopped. Palyavatarayar, who was covered with a thick veil, choked and choked, cleared his throat again and said, Come again. Even if I agree to their wondrous wish, don't we still need the consent of Madhuranthak Deva? Can they leave for Digvahia without taking leave of the emperor? So let's all go to Tanjavur. Not only that, Pata, if my father orders otherwise after going to Tanjavur, I will not be able to disobey it. Then there is my mother, the daughter of a Malayan. There is my younger sister Prati. They will not consent to my giving up my hair and going to Desanthar. It will be difficult to disobey them. Pata, this matter must be settled in this Kadampur mansion. Go to Tanjore and bring Madhurandhagan here. We can talk to father after deciding. After everything is ready for the invasion, I will come to Tanjore and bid farewell to my parents and leave. Or let Madhurandhagan get the title now and my parents come to Kanchi. I will make them stay in the golden house that has been built and leave. Palyavatarayar looked at Sambuvarayar. Sambuvarayaro was looking at the rooftop. Seeing that no help was forthcoming from him, Palyavatare said, Komagana. What can I say against their command? Said. Don't say command, Pata. Is this boy commanding them who have gone grey in the service of the Chola Empire? Say that my prayer will be fulfilled. Said Aditha Kari Gallan. That's it, said the priest. Mika Vandanam, Pata. 
Then make arrangements to leave soon. Bring Mad Hurendhagen publicly on an elephant and bring him to this place. Or in a golden chariot. Don't just this time for the veiled palanquin of the youngest grandmother. Kari Gallen laughed after saying that. Then looking at Kandamaran and others, he said, Kandamara. Unpadu Yokandan. More guests are going to come to your house. After Sundara Chola, Madhurand Hakar, who is going to be the emperor of the Chola country, is going to come. He will also bring the daughter of the little Palyavatarayar who will be his Mahishi with him. The Kadampur mansion will be full of noise. Let's go. Let's go hunting. Come. Once I was good at archery. I was called Aditha Kari Kalan next to Arkuna. Three years without touching a bow, I've forgotten archery. I need to get used to it again. Parthapendra. Vandiyadeva. Let's all go. Where can we go hunting? Can we go to Kalamalai? Kari Galan. Asked as a general. Sambuvarayar, who had not participated in any talk all this time, said, Come again. Kalamalai is far away. You don't have to go that far. There is a thick forest on the western bank of the Viranarayana Lake. It is called Dandakaranyam. There are also plenty of wild animals for hunting. They are in our hunting hall. The lakeside forest is also close to this mansion. If you go hunting in the morning, you can return home at night, said. That may be done, sir. As long as I am a guest in this mansion, they have laid down for me the law. Shall I take their maiden Manamegali to hunt too? It is always lively where she is. Said Aditha Kari Gallan. I don't mind, let's listen to Manamegali, said Sambuvarayar. Then Kanamaran said, Why do women go hunting? The only job is to see if they are safe. You can't concentrate on hunting. And doesn't Nandini Devi need help here? He said. Yes, yes, Kanamaran is always worried about the grandmother of Palvur. There is another difficulty in taking Manamekali. Someone will shoot an arrow at her, thinking she is a deer leaping after seeing her jump. Let the girls remain in the palace, and we can go hunting. We must leave early tomorrow morning. We will finish the hunting early tonight. Everyone sleep early. Sir. Tell all the hunters now. Come. Come. Let's go to our lodge. Saying that, Aditha Kari Kalan took Vandiyadeva by the hand and left. Kanamaran and Parthapendra stood looking at them with a bit of awe. Sambuvari went to issue orders to the hunters.